good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship. I know I'm sitting in a different place than I usually am. Uh, it's because I threw out my back yesterday. So I will be in this position for the whole service. But um, please don't let that stop you all from standing when you sing. And um, at all the appropriate times. Um, I, hopefully you're all feeling well rested after your extra hour of sleep last night. Um, just a few announcements. Our book study will begin a week from this coming Friday. It's on the Angels of Christmas. It goes correlates with the um, theme um, that we're going to be using throughout Advent. And um, I need you to let me know today if you want me to order you a book. You're welcome to order your own on Amazon. That's all I'm doing. But um, I will be ordering the books and the book study, whether you, and you can get a book, whether you want to be part of the study or not, it'll be on Zoom. Um, and then you should also know that, um, as you know, Thanksgiving is coming. And in talking with Jack um, Gunther, we, um, he realized that the thing that they were missing for the boxes, the Arlington food shelf was missing for the boxes for Thanksgiving that are going out to a hundred households in our community um, were pickles or olives. So we're asking that um, sometime before Friday, before Thursday, the 17th, you would bring a jar of pickles or a jar of olives or both. Um, and we have a basket out in Bailey Hall that you can place them in. And then if we don't get enough for, that's okay, the, our mission committee will um, purchase the rest. So um, we wanted to give you all a chance first to participate in that and know that you're helping our neighbors. Um, also next Sunday, there is Sunday school. So if you have any young kids that are uh, friends or neighbors that you'd like to invite, please do so. And then it's pretty soon we're going to be an Advent workshop and pageant and all that good stuff. So that's all coming. Anybody else have announcements that need to be made today? Go ahead, Mary. Hi, good morning. Um, I miss choir, and, and I'm hoping that some of you do as well. It's great to see you. Um, imagine if you'd forgotten to set your clock back last night, and you came here an hour early. That's kind of what I'm thinking of. It's required. <laughs> it was that you that that you come an hour early. We rehearse before the service starts. Um, what I'd like to do is to sing at least on communion Sundays. I have um, a couple of dates, like Sunday after next, just to do an intro, something simple, uh, like a call to worship um, to get us back into the swing of things. And then to sing on communion Sundays and to sing on Christmas Eve and other special times that, that we want to, to build us back up. And why, you know, why participate in choir and in singing is that music tends to elevate things and it tends to reach a part of our hearts that isn't always accessible. Um, it's difficult to describe, but when you remove yourself from it and you experience the poetry and the music together, it adds to it for both the person singing and for whoever is listening to it. The only thing that's required is that you want to participate. Everything else will take care of itself. If you can speak, you can sing. Um, and I am incredibly flexible as far as altering parts. Anyone who's worked before knows you can't sing this note. Okay, fine, sing this I one instead. People. It'll yes, work I'm just as well. Sorry. See me after um, the service and during throughout the hour, I'll hang around for a little bit if you have any questions, um, but, or you just show up next week at nine o'clock and I will be here with bells on. Thanks. I won't really have bells. Okay, so on that note, let us raise our voices in song and sing sing praise to god who reigns above found at number 126 in the red hymnal
I invite you to join with me in the call to worship. Even though we don't always feel it, God is with us. Yet God is with us. God brings to us hope and peace. We place our trust in God's abundant love. God of new beginnings, it is a joy to sing your praises. Your glory blesses our souls with hope. Your majesty fills our lives with splendor. Your spirit makes all things new, blessing creation with healing and wholeness. Shake the heavens and earth once more that we may see your power and hold fast to the source of our hope. For you are greater than our fears and mightier than our failings. Call us from death to life, Holy One, for you are the God of the living, not the dead. Amen. Let us join then together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, as we have no children in our midst, we will continue on with um, sharing our joys and concerns. Um, this week, a joy is we get to pray for our friends at the uh, First Congregational Church of Fairhaven and their pastor, the Reverend James Mills, who's only their pastor till next week. Um, uh, he's moving to a new church outside of Philadelphia after next week. So um, we hold them in prayer during this time of transition for sure. And um, concerns I'm aware of. We hold our friend David Moore in prayer. He is not with us today, and he's been um, having some issues with illness. Um, and so we hold David in prayer. Um, we certainly hold the people of Ukraine in prayer. And we also, I also would ask prayers for our nation. Uh, Tuesday is election day, and none of us is, has a crystal ball to know what will happen. But I pray that it will be a, a day of peace and uh, with all of the best parts of our American culture stepping forward. Um, anybody else have joys or concerns to raise? Diane. Um, the joy that Kathy and John back. Definitely. Welcoming Kathy and John back in person. Kathy. Ooh. It's Karen Underhill. Thank you. Kathy? John. She can't hear you, Karen. No. I unmuted me, but yeah, it doesn't it doesn't make any difference. I mean it does for us, you and me, but not for her. Gotcha. Thanks, Thank you. Oh, <laughs> Anybody else have other joys or concerns we'd lift up today? Then let us be in the spirit of prayer together. God of the living, we come before you on bended knee. We come carrying the concerns that weigh heavy on our hearts. We come juggling the worries that consume our minds. To us, these seem like legitimate prayers. But when we read of the Sadducees harassing Jesus with their convoluted questions, we have to wonder, why do we, your beloved children, insist on conjuring up worst case scenarios if our hearts reside in you? Why do we let ourselves be carried along by the Sadducees of this age when we could be living fully in the here and now glory of your presence instead? We lift up our concerns in faith to you and your abiding presence. Today, we are especially mindful and hold in prayer. Our friend David, 
I appreciate the prayers for me. I, we lift up the people of Ukraine and we pray for this, our nation that we love. May this election day be one where our best selves are present. Oh God, throughout, your throughout time, your faithful people have swung towards you and away with disappointing predictability. We have been blown into frightening places by the winds of fear. Our human hearts are so easily swayed. We are susceptible to the naysayers, to those who say faith is not enough. But we have also felt the comforting breath of your spirit moving through us even in these challenging times. We have experienced the pleasure of deep friendship, the relief of answered prayer, and simple moments that sparkle with joyful wonder. We lift in gratitude the joys that we share, including those for the First Congregational Church of Fairhaven and their Pastor James. We also lift up and give thanks that Kathy and John are back in our presence in person. And we also lift up the thanksgiving that John offers for all of the signs of uh, love and support that he's received over these past months. What we ask God is that you hold us close through all of this. May our trust in you prevail in every moment of our lives. Hold us in your sheltering love so that we can withstand the winds that blow us this way and that. From this place of protection, may we be willing to take the risks faith demands of us. May we embrace the gift of life that we share with all of our beloved ancestors in faith, past, present, and future. All are alive in you. God of the living, we are grateful. Amen. Eternal God, you are the caretaker of our souls. You draw near to all who call on you. May the offering we bring before you in the plates or online or by mail heal the broken lives and unrealized dreams of our world. May the gifts we bring be signs of hope for the future, especially in places plagued by injustice, that all may know the power of your spirit. Amen. I invite you then to join me in the doxology. gifts we bring are a sign of our commitment, our commitment to you and the life of faith. And so we ask that you would continue to bless our lives, bless our hands and hearts that reach out with these gifts to share your love and your mercy and your peace. We pray this blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you then to turn to number 629 in the red hymnal as we sing together, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart.
morning. Good morning. I'm not Karen. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who don't know, my name is Allison. <laughs> And I'm not wearing a name tag because mine is lost. So hopefully by next week, I'll have a new one. Our Psalter this morning, I also didn't know I was doing this until after the service started. So <laughs> if I stumble on anything, it's because I haven't pre-read um, like I usually do. Our Psalter today is Psalm 145, verses 1 through 5 and 17 through 21. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall extol your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. They will recount the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. Our gospel reading today comes from Luke chapter 20, verses 27 through 38. There came to him some Sadducees who those who say that there is no resurrection. And they asked him a question saying, teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, having a wife, but no children, the man must take the wife and raise up the children for his brother. <laughs> now there were seven brothers. The first took a wife and died without children. And the second and the third took her, and likewise, all seven left no children and died. Afterward, the woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be? For the seven had her as wife. And Jesus said to them, the sons of this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are accounted worthy to attain that age and to the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage, for they cannot die anymore because they are equal to angels and are sons of God, being sons of the resurrection. But that the dead are raised, even Moses showed in the passage about the bush, where he called the Lord the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Now he is not God of the dead, but of the living, for all live to him. Thank you, Allison. I really appreciate your last minute. You did a great job, too. It wasn't long into the car trip from Chicago to New York that the two strangers and recent college graduates on their way to beginning the rest of their lives started making sure that the other person knew that they were a person to be taken seriously. In an instance of one-upmanship, Harry defends what is a key part of his persona with this line. When I buy a new book, I read the last pages first. That way, in case I die before I finish, I know how it ends. That, my friend, is a dark side. Sally hits back indicating that doesn't really categorize him as being deep. Those words from the script of one of my favorite films, When Harry Met Sally, gives voice to what so many of us want. Answers, explanations. We wanna know how the story ends. Jesus here in today's reading is talking to the spellbound crowds in the temple after he finally makes it to Jerusalem on the back of a donkey or a colt, and after he split the tables of those trying to sell things there. The Sadducees, seeing the power he has over the people, 
want to take him down a peg or two or get rid of him altogether. They then figure the easiest way to discredit him is to use Holy Scripture to trick him. It's important to note that Sadducees recognize only the Pentateuch, which is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the first five books of what we know as the Old Testament. And that's the only thing they really recognize as authoritative scripture. And since there was no mention of resurrection in any of those books, they didn't believe in it. They also didn't believe in angels or spirits. Jesus here will respond thoughtfully to the hypothetical story that paint that they paint that is reliant on Jewish law regarding marriage. The fact that the question is so absurdly convoluted, they think will only help point out how ridiculous Jesus's teachings are. We can just imagine them grinning and high-fiving each other at coming up with what they thought was the perfect question. Then Jesus answers. And the answer is that the Sadducees are assuming that life in the resurrection will be just like life in this world. Death is the key concept here. And Jesus is, is instructing that if you don't, that you don't use the same mindset for what is to come as you use for your earthly life. Marriage and all the rules surrounding it then were meant to provide for the care of folks in their old age, and especially if they were left widowed by death. Children would be caring for the parents, and so there was real concern for what happens to those who were childless. The point that Jesus is making with the Sadducees is that aging and death and marriage will not exist in the era of resurrection. So the issue of whose wife will she be in their question will be moot. The only identity for that woman and everyone else is that they will be a child of God. Resurrection will soon become very real for Jesus and his followers. And Jesus makes his case by citing the burning bush, going back to scripture that they respect, and that story when God reveals God's self to Moses. Note that Jesus recounts from Exodus that when God said those important men, he cites, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, those guys had all been dead for centuries at that point. But here, God does not say, I was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What God said was, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This speaks to the idea that God still considers them alive. God is God of the living. Death does happen, as we all know and feel and grieve and will honor together in two weeks' time um, during our annual um, service in which we do a service of remembrance and thanksgiving, lighting candles for those who've left this world. What Jesus wants them to know here is that death can be acknowledged as deeply painful, but it doesn't separate us from God. We do not stop existing. There is life after death. What Jesus is sharing here is the revelation that God is so committed to life that death will not have the last word. We cannot give death more power than God. Death is not eternal but God is. And with God, we go on living just in a way we don't understand because we're so rooted in this earthly life, the only one we can touch right now. If we go back to that wish to know how the story ends, this knowledge of resurrection is wonderful, but it still leaves us wanting more details. That is the stuff of so much imagining in writing, in art, in all parts of life. So much imagining on the part of humankind for the ages. Maybe what Jesus did for that awestruck crowd and the Sadducees that day was to let them and us know that we may not fully understand or have all the answers we yearn for. And yet, God is present now and for all eternity, 
we dwell here and beyond in the place of God's love. A more fruitful response to this mystery is to focus on how God is moving in our lives and what are we doing as a result of that love. Wonder and awe and mystery are gifts, but not the kind that come in neat packages tied up perfectly with a bow. Jesus is saying that resurrected life will look very different from this one. And still we are called to love as God loves, unconditionally and forever. That love then spread out to as many lives as we can touch is our testament to the power of God's love in our own life. Let us then raise this prayer. We acknowledge our frailty before the power of death, O God, yet we believe your power is greater still. Help us by your Holy Spirit to follow Christ with integrity, courage, and hope until the day we are raised with him to the everlasting life and glory. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come to communion, my friends, as true friends to Job. Oh, that my words were written down. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that our books were moved, and we could share them there. Oh, that with an iron pen and with lead, they were engraved on a rock forever. Oh, that these words were For I know my Redeemer lives, and at the last will stand upon the earth. After my skin is destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God. God is on my side, and my eyes behold, and not another. There are sacred stories about eating together. Barley fields gleaned, a starving widow with a child who baked bread for a wandering prophet, a woman who brought food to invaders so no one would be killed. There are sacred stories that celebrate festivals, the end of famines, the kindness of strangers, and of creatures of air, sea, and land. We remember Jesus made a wedding bright and a fishnet full a child's lunch enough for all, and a tax collector's table, a feast of salvation. We remember a Passover meal when Jesus shared a cup with one he knew would deny him, dipped bread and gravy with a betrayer and made sure everyone was full before taking a small piece of holiness and pouring a sip of compassion to name a covenant in food. And so now we come not to boast or argue or even sing praise, but to replace spe rich speeches with a few plain words. Please join me in prayer. Christ, you spoke a mystery that your body is our bread and our drink is your life poured out. We are your Sunday guests, so we may be hosts to your children all the week long. We need a deep sacrament to serve at your table. Holy Spirit, come and make this bread and cup a miracle deep as faith and ordinary as hope. Amen.
the bread of life and the cup of salvation poured out for all of us. Let us now eat of it. Let us share together the prayer of thanksgiving. God, we are blessed in the community of tangible sanctuary and virtual sanctuary. May the sacrament shared help us in the week to come to recognize everyone we meet as hungry guests and spread a table or tailgate of love, offer a takeout or weekend backpack of hope, Share our churchy recipe for faith that they may find the ingredients they need. Amen. Let us go out singing our closing hymn, number 308 in the red hymnal, Thine Be the Glory. May the love of God, abundant through Jesus Christ and freely given to us, be with, all, with you all your lives. Go in peace to serve God in all that you do. Amen. Amen.
God be with you always. Let us go now offer each other signs and words of God's peace. Thank you.